Good morning and welcome to Brewing Happiness. You know, I think that's how they get the milk mustache in the in the Got Milk commercial. Little foamy creamer. Well, good morning. Today, do, uh, let me ask a question. Do you find that, well, let's back up. I was going to ask if you find yourself at stress at Christmas, but let's back up and say, do you find that sometimes uh, you're, you're not having time for a moment of joy or you're not having time to enjoy the little pleasures in life around you because you're so incredibly busy. You're so incredibly focused on the things you have to do and the responsibilities that you have and everyone that you have to take care of. You know, that's what we're going to talk about today here on Brewing Happiness, a show where I like to say grab a cup of your, your favorite brew in the morning, whether it's coffee or tea or whether it's this is the morning or the coffee break or the evening for you. Maybe your brew is a, is a spirited beverage. But the idea is that one positive thought can change your pers- a day, can change your perspective. And that's what we like to talk about here. So today I wanted to talk about the stress that we bring on ourselves that if you're, if you're, if you have a family, if you have a job, if you have any responsibilities whatsoever, you could probably put some kind of stresses on yourself. And then we have the holidays coming. And so the obligations and responsibilities double, triple. And so the stresses that we feel throughout the year double and triple in the holiday season. So today, that's what I wanted to talk about is how can you let some of that go? And I guess for me that I know that I was a young mom and I raised a a house full, five children with a full-time job and uh, busy in all kinds of different activities. And I know those kind of pressures. There's always something you need to be doing. And the kids want to show you their piece of artwork. And you're like, yeah, yeah, but I just got to finish this email. And I remember those days so clearly. And I also remember that moment when the whole the whole shebang became clear to me as I saw this exact scenario played out for me. And my daughter wanted to show me a picture of an angel that she'd drawn at Christmas, middle of the month, nothing special going on, but you know, so many things to prepare for. And I said, yeah, yeah, I got to finish this email. And I remember seeing that look on her face, that crestfallen, so proud of the angel she'd drawn, just wanted to share it with her mom. And I just, it it was like a, a cataclysmic moment in my head. Everything came together as I realized, good morning, Marianne, as I realized that the stresses of, especially at the holidays, but a lot of the stresses that are in our lives are those that we impose on ourselves. We want to be perfect. We want to be there for everyone. We want our children to have the best experiences of all times. And in order to fulfill these expectations that we place on ourselves, we, we take on more maybe than we can really handle. We, we forget to leave any time in the schedule to take care of the person taking care of the rest of things. And all of a sudden it's overwhelming. And one night you can't decide what to have for dinner and you find yourself sobbing in the kitchen. Again, something that's happened to me. So what's the solution? Well, there's a couple things and that's what we're going to talk about today is a couple of ways to step back and have realistic expectations and joy in the holiday season, not stress, not work, not got to's, not have to's, but get to's and joy to's. That's what we're talking about today. So uh, the first thing I want to think about is when you are planning your schedule and all the things you're committing to and the ways you want to do it, um, simple can be your friend, right? Um, I can remember wanting to bake cookies with my children and getting oh my gosh, different recipes and trying to make it all, everybody, all the different sprinkles and, and, and trying to create this fantastic experience. And the truth is those kids don't care. They're there because they want a memory or they want to do something with you. They want to make a Christmas memory with you. If you stop at the store on your way home from work and buy a tube of sugar cookies and a, and a container of icing and a little, and you got a little food color at home in the, in the cabinet, right? 
that is a fun-filled night for you and the kids. No muss, no fuss, low pressure. And when you think about things like this, you add that to other things in your life. Simplify is the best. We want to we want to make the best. We want to do the best. We want to look the best. And in this day of Pinterest and Instagram, we, uh, you know, in, in the days of everyone showing their beautiful, perfect lives and their their Pinterest accomplishments, we feel so much pressure to make everything beautiful and perfect. Make it a memory. That's all that cares. Be there. Smile and laugh. Play some Christmas music. All that stuff is free. Spend time with your children. That's the memory that's going to be made. Not how many different kinds of cookies or how many different kinds of icings or how many different kinds of sprinkles. The other thing to remember is to put time in your schedule this month, especially every month, but this month especially for you. Put on your calendar a bubble bath or um, a, a massage or a, a, an outing with friends for lunch or something that sounds, or maybe just an hour to sit in your backyard and read. Well, if you live in California. Something for you. What do you love to do? What's, a, what's something that recharges you? Taking a hike on the beach, taking a walk in the mountains, going to your park and reading your book, sitting on your favorite bench. What's something for you? Because I guarantee you there's an hour or two in the coming weeks that you can devote to you. And remember, if you don't recharge, what happens? If you're not recharged, you're not there to give. I like to think of it this way. When your cup runneth over, you are spilling love and joy and happiness and giving to everyone around you. But if your cup's not running over, we're going to hear a big sucking sound, right? You are the bringer of joy, but you have to, you got to take care of the cup, right? Okay. That's a really bad analogy, but you have to take care of yourself. The fountain, the, even a geyser, even a geyser rests occasionally, right? Uh, uh, everything has, it, it, all things are in cycles and there has to be a time for you to recharge your batteries. So when you're making your busy schedule, when you're, when you're saying, I can do that, I can do that, I need to do this, I need to do that, what can go? What can you cut out? What's good? What, what, what's on that list that really doesn't have to be? Or where, what can you give up? Maybe you give up an hour of Netflix or an hour of no sound sitting in peace and quiet. I don't know. These are the things I like to do. Um, build you a fire, stare into the fire for an hour. Not much more comforting and, and satisfying than that. Uh, anyway, these are the things I like to do, but you do, you find what does, what makes you, what, what brings you calmness? What brings you solace and peace? And how can you work a few of those extra moments into this extremely busy month? And then my last tip is as well, two more tips. Actually, I, I thought of one more. I'm going to put, I had a list of three, but I'm going to put one more on the list. Uh, number three is breathe it, it, on every list, right? On every list that we talk about, whether it's how to be, how to, uh, how to have a positive thinking, how to stay calm, how to be objective, how to move from your sympathetic nervous system into your parasympathetic nervous system, how to transform yourself from a fight or flight anxiety into a rest and digest peace and calm. And there's a, it's just, the answer is breathing. The answer is your breath is everything. Breathing is something that what we all do, all creatures, all living creatures, breathing some in some form or another, right? Uh, bringing in, bringing in all the goodness of, our, of, of what we need to enrich our blood and expelling all the toxins that we no longer need and breathing deeply and purposefully is a game changer when you learn to do it regularly. When in those moments when you're overwhelmed, instead of sobbing in the kitchen, you stop and just breathe in eight, count to three, breathe out 10. There are a thousand breathing counting methods. Go online, go to YouTube, a bazillion of them. But breathe yourself into calmness. Every morning when you wake up, breathe deeply. Every night before you go to bed, breathe deeply. For me, um, I personally use my alarm. I have a breathing alarm set up on my phone and it tells me when to, it's an app and it tells me when to breathe, when to take some deep breaths. <clears throat> you know, 10 minutes of deep breathing a day can change your whole life. So pretty standard stuff, but we forget to do it, right? This is just a reminder. Take time for you. 
take time to breathe. And finally, the, the, the one I, I guess I'm going to throw in, which is again on every list, is gratitude. Come from gratitude. Look around and be grateful for all you have to do, all you have, and all the things you are gifted with bringing. That everything you do is designed to take care of or bring joy to someone, to help uh, accomplish something, uh, bring home a paycheck that's going to put those presents under the Christmas tree. Everything we do has purpose and meaning. And if that meaning is taking care of you, fantastic. If that meaning is work and taking care of the bills, got to get done. If that meaning is your family and taking care of your family, that's a chore that is given from love and responsibility we accepted way back when we decided to have a family. So gratitude that all those things are in your life, that even if you're not at that very moment experiencing the beauties of family, of care, of deep breathing, right? Even if in this moment, those things aren't happening, you can be grateful that they're in your life. You can reach for, instead of reaching for despair or exasperation or annoyance or anger or all those places we can let ourselves go. If we reach for gratitude, it's a game changer. It's a mind shifter. It can immediately can fill us with love and awe and wonder. <sighs> let me see that angel, darling. I can't wait to see what you've drawn for me. So that's our show for today. Just a little bit of letting go. Let it go. Whatever it is that's bothering you, whatever expectations you have of the holiday season, let them go. Sit back and enjoy. And the more you enjoy, the more joy you experience. Remember this. This is my favorite saying. Living joy is giving joy. The more joy you find in each moment, the more joy the people around you will find in each moment. Everybody loves someone who's happy and joy-filled. And that's my goal for you, you happiness ambassadors, you happiness hunters, is that you find that, find that joy, choose that joy. My favorite quote, President Abraham Lincoln said, most of us are about as happy as we make up our minds to be. And in every moment that we live, we get to choose to look at it from a perspective of gratitude, love, joy, awe, wonder, even if we're not loving what's going on in that moment, remember, or we let ourselves go to that despair, anger, resentment, unhappiness place. Ain't nobody got time for that. That's not helping anybody. You get to choose. Simply take those deep breaths. Remember all the beauty and all the love that goes around you. Remember all those responsibilities are things that you took on out of love and joy. Remember Christmas comes every year. So learn to flow with the with the with the flow of the season. But you don't have to be the Griswolds to to be celebrating Christmas. Put up a string of lights around your front door, right? You don't need a giant tree. You just need a tree. You don't need a lot of presents. You just need love and warmth and thinking of each other. You know your gift could be time. Maybe your gift is. Uh, a gift of time. There's always something we have to give. Okay. I'm rambling now. So that's my show for today until the next time I am live, which is quite spotty these days. I understand, but eh, that is what it is because I'm accepting, letting go of my expectations on myself, at least for a little while, while I just revel in this beautiful holiday season. Alrighty. That's my show until, well, uh, until the next time, I think I'll be on tomorrow. We'll see. Might be later today. Until the next time, make it a happy day.